What is up guys? It is Raw Vegan Dude and welcome back to the channel. So I've got another fruit adventure video for you guys today. I am on my way to visit Wally and to buy some fruit. So he told me that he's going to be moving out of the property by the end of the month and that I should come and get some cuttings as well as buy some fruit. So he has a lot of avos and also quite a few jackfruit at the moment. So I'm gonna go through and pick some of those up. Super excited. So yeah, I wanted to also go there, especially to get cuttings because I really want to get some early season variety avocados. And the avocados that Wally has are ripening now and they're tasting really good. And the ones at, on the market at the moment taste quite terrible. They are not ready. They require a lot more time, at least a month or two longer on the tree to actually start tasting good. And yeah, the ones that we buy from the shop at the moment, they are horrible. To perhaps put in a good couple of these early season trees because they are worth a lot at this moment in time. We probably get around nine months of the year avocados run for about nine months of the year and yeah to extend that season and to especially to get it in the period where there aren't many avocados on the market and yeah that is good potential so i'm on my way it will take me about 35 to 40 minutes to get to where i am going so yeah i hope you guys enjoy the video This year in May, it's actually going to be my fourth year anniversary as a raw vegan. And wow, the time has flown by so fast. It's been crazy. But you know what? It's something that is so incredible and beautiful. It's been such a journey. And yeah, I'm super excited for the future. And yeah, I also plan on doing a water fast perhaps at the end of this year because it's been that long and there is also a couple of issues that I do want to resolve that I've had for a while now and that is number one my meniscus injury which I had around five years ago and that kind of healed during my first water fast but obviously I made a good couple of mistakes during that first water fast and I needed to go a bit longer to heal that injury completely. I also have a Achilles injury on both my feet, which is quite strange. And yeah, that's also been quite a niggling injury for a couple of years. And on days where I am standing up a lot or very physically active on my feet, those hurt at the end of the day. So looking at resolving that, and yeah, also doing a detox and becoming better hydrated. I hope you guys can actually hear me properly because it's really windy outside. And yeah, it is actually nice for a change to have a break from the insanely hot weather that we've been having. And it's already the end of summer and the beginning of water, but it is still super hot. It's probably our hottest time of the year, the end of um, January until the beginning of March. And now it's already the end of March, going into April, and it's still so hot. I am extremely fortunate to live in such a beautiful climate. It's a subtropical climate, and yeah, we have a very mild winters. Yeah, no frost at all where I am on the coast. The area around where I stay is rural, so they, and it's mostly sugarcane, but a lot of people are actually pulling out their sugarcane and planting up macadamia nut trees. So yeah, those, um, those have been booming in the past couple of years. I'm not sure if you guys can see any of that. But yeah, tons of sugarcane on 
either side of me there are lots of macadamia nuts. This area is also very well known for the banana plantations. What has been happening in the last few years is farmers are actually moving away from planting bananas and because it's actually cheaper to import bananas from countries like Swaziland which we share our border with and it's like so much cheaper to actually bring those in than grow it in our own country because the price of fertilizers and pesticides and labor are a lot uh, more in South Africa as compared to the less economically developed countries. So yeah, that's actually quite a shame because if everyone has a patch of dirt big enough in the yard, bananas will grow super, super easily. We live in the perfect climate for it, in the subtropics. And yeah, so many people buy bananas from the shop, whereas it is so easy to actually grow your own. And obviously that would be all organic because you don't really need pesticides. You may have to cover them uh, from the animals but that is the thing, a lot of people are put off from planting and growing their own food because of the monkeys. And the monkeys in some places are a real problem because they are just <laughs> they are just very naughty and destructive. Like they will just like take bites out of unripe fruit or, or just completely destroy it, which is not nice. So people who are really invested in their gardening or like put up cages and greenhouses whereas other people who are not really interested rather buy things from the shop and there we go you can see the beautiful ocean water is a bit dirty because there has been quite a bit of rain especially when it rains inland it brings all the sediment to the coast So strelitzias are actually related to your banana plants and that is why bananas grow so well here. Also lots of wild figs. There are various species of fig here and figs, even the wild figs, are related to jackfruit and mulberry and that is why <laughs> jackfruit also grows really well here. There are lots and lots of rivers and wetlands and yeah, it's important that we protect these areas, especially the wetlands, because they filter out the water before they reach the ocean. They have a large biodiversity of species which they are home to, say around 100 to 150 years ago. Many of these rivers were teeming with crocodiles and hippos. There are many other species that call the wetlands home. Wetlands actually can filter out chemicals that are dumped into rivers. It is indeed very busy for a Sunday afternoon. I guess the sun is out, even though it's quite windy. There are a lot of people going to the beach, enjoying like lunch and so on. Yeah, it's quite nice to see. Two jackfruits. This big. Yeah. I've got two mangoes. And I've got anacostas. 
Now they're all around this place. Hey, I've been. Cheers. <laughs> it is very windy. And you guys are on top of the hill, so it makes it even more. That is a huge bowling ball of a jackfruit. Jeez. <laughs> it's huge. At least that was some support. <laughs> Cool. You get the one ah, nice sizes with a, with a rough shell, and this is the clear. Yeah, this is nice. Nice one. Then you get this one. Oh. Okay, no, so no, like no, three no. different types. Three different, yeah. no? Four different Four types. Four different types. There's another one. This one is already <coughs> going right. Line that oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All of these are packing up. Huh? Different the different pairs. There, that one there. There's one right there. Those ones are late June. There, okay, so they are later season. Yeah. Yeah, like they like when the are finished. Yeah, then mm. we still have. Added. Still have some. Yeah. So they'll be full up, so you know when you need. You can just tune. The boot is now very full with avos and jackfruit, one of the biggest jackfruit I've seen and also a lot of cutting so I've got a lot of grafting to do and like I said all of these avos are early season avos which makes it really nice because there's a high demand for these early season avos. So yeah, a lot of grafting to do. I'm sure you guys can see some of the cuttings in the back. And yeah, it is time to get back home. So let's go. <laughs>